talk about the back of the control board. These are IN007 diodes. They're rated at 1 amp, 1000 volts. You're running six of these in parallel, which means this circuit right here for each wire, because there's three power wires in the coil, can handle six amps at a thousand volts. Now we're not getting anywhere near that, but we are getting a transient spike from the pulse collapse. This works for me. It's the best thing I've found so far. If somebody finds something better, I'd be glad to hear it. But in this case, what I did is I created this little jig here. You can see the gap right here behind here for this thing that I made to hold these diodes together so I could solder them. So what you're doing here is you're taking these six diodes which come on a strip if you buy them similar to this right here. You take six of them, you, you either cut or pull the paper off the bottom of them and then you put them in to this jig to, to hold them while you solder them together here. So line them up. So you just squeeze them together like that. And then what I've been doing is taking a small piece of uh, solder like this, holding it here, and then just twisting it like this. It don't matter, we're going to melt it in a minute. But what you're doing here is you're holding those together temporarily until they're, that's turned into solder. And it's, it allows you to square it up like that. And then when you take your soldering gun, you're just heating this up. And you're able to just go straight down like that and come up with a nice even flow of the solder. And then you do that on the other side and you end up with this. And this is the way I'm, I'm doing all these now. It, it's easier, it makes it easier when you go to solder these on. They're not sticking up similar to these. This is a real pain to solder down. This was a breeze. And I got, so we've got some of these put together. The plates are done and uh, this plate and this plate fit on this part. So this is a, the back for the control board. Just put this on to give it a organized apart here. So, so this hole right here lines up with this side and lines up with this hole here. Lines up with this hole. So I'm going to put on the back here the same hole. I'm going to tighten this down. Okay. Now what we got is this top piece mounted for the front and the back and then this little piece of plastic goes on there like it is on the bottom there. So you just drill a hole and make a cut those out of any material really. You just want a spacer wide enough to allow you to put the diodes on the back of the control board and mount it to the back of the coil. So you know it's not that big of a deal to just make it out of random plastic. And now that those, you can see those holes line up all the way through, but they're not drilled through this material. So the best thing to do at this stage is to make sure you got that square. I sit it in a little hole I have already made the hole in the bottom of it. And then I'm going to drill What we're going to do now is assemble some of these right here. So 
what you after you've got these small uh, things cut and ground, you're going to take a chip. If you notice some of these have solder on them, that gives me a good solid connection when I tighten this down on there. So if you tin those, it'll just give you a better connection. So it's an, it's not I don't know that it's required. It's just something I start doing to ensure that when I tighten these clamp these connectors onto the chip there was no way that it wasn't going to make a good connection it would seat properly so she got those on there See, some of these are from a different manufacturer and they're not exactly the same so it was just tighten up the chip into this block assembly to give the block assembly stabi stability so we can run a little glue down the back of it. All right, and you're going to turn that over. A little bead of glue down so it'll soak down between the two connectors and it, it'll run down in between there and you should glue those together and you want to set that out of the way now the glue's set up on those and what we're going to do here is I connect these to the circuit board the control board it's not really a circuit board And all I can say here is that um, if you use uh, micrometers or actually calipers, um, digital calipers, uh, putting these little screws and stuff in makes it a lot easier because you can use the calipers to get the dimension in between these um, threads and use it to find the right drill bit. For the right size for this to work perfectly and uh, I'll see if I can't get a number for the drill bit and the screw and put it on the PDF for you because uh, it makes it a lot easier when the stuff goes together <laughs> like that so I just found these little bolts uh, little screws surplus and they were just the right size so they go all the way through the the heat sink and they screw into the backing plate now on the bigger um, the the bigger 250 volt version of this this chip it actually has a metal grounding to uh, cool it better and it also uh, connects the the actual pulse circuit to both plate surfaces so okay now we got that connected now we're going to run these little wires through here and bend them back so we can solder on the diodes so the easiest way to do this here is I take one of these little pieces of wire and just bend a little curve in it and then stick that in here like this
Okay, now we've got the wires ran from the center pin of the chip through the block connector and then it's connected so the diode is facing toward the plate and we've trimmed the edges. So what we're going to do here is solder this to this wire. Sure that it's facing the right way here. Now once you got that, I'm going to solder the other side to the plate. I know when you're tinning, it's important that you don't do what I'm doing, but because it's a large surface area, it's really the only way you're going to get the solder to melt fast enough and to heat the plate up enough for it to actually start to adhere to the copper. So I don't run my soldering gun so hot that it's going to affect the diode. Okay, so what I've done here is I've created these little uh, extensions for the ground key. Um, I left about an inch of shield on the wire, and the wire is about three and a half inches long. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take these resistors and twist the resistor on. We're going to need three of these and then we're going to bend this part over and we're going to tin that right there. We have to have three of those and they have to be spaced out so they fit into the first pin on the shield there so they fit into the first block on the block connector so so if you sit them right over the block connector you can see how that works Now I've made these for the cart motor, if you've seen the videos, and it really works well because you can, if it doesn't have enough torque, then you drop the resistance. If you want to raise the voltage, you increase the resistance so you don't overload your trigger. And this gives you the ability to be a little flexible even though the way this is set up, it's it's not as flexible as a Bedini because each individual coil does not have its own rheostat. We're using voltage instead. So, okay, we're going to check that and see that, yes, that will work right there. And we're going to take that, we're going to solder it. And a little solder on this here. Not my gun is hot enough yet.
trick is to get the wire hot enough to allow it to melt that solder right in there. But now it gets so hot it's going to damage that resistor. Now this is the other end of this is where the trigger is connected. So the trigger wire from the coil is connected to this resistor pack. So take that, loop that back around like that, and then we're going to stick it right in there, like that, right there. Now I don't want to tighten it up yet because I still got to put the diode loop in there. If you made it properly, it would probably just stay in there anyway. You want to make sure you get them all your wires underneath those connectors because it's real easy to miss and then that that chip is not going to work you're going to actually lose power by doing it and not ensuring that's in there properly okay once you get the diode bent like this and stick a little piece of wire in there about two inches long and you want the diode facing Toward, as you're looking at the back of the board toward the left uh, I, I remember it because it faces towards the for pin one so and then when you stick that in there like that you tighten these up I wanted to show you an alternate way here while I'm doing this. Now we're putting the diodes back here and we're doing the loop. But you could easily do it this way where you just solder the diode to the chip itself and then you wouldn't need to do that. You just stick the key in there and put the ground wires in there. So you could do it either way. Whatever way is easier for you to accomplish this. Um, I've been putting the diode in there and then tightening up on the, the ground side of or the, the resistor side of the wire. That way when I stick the ground wire in there, this side's already locked into place. So we're sticking a diode in and then we're tightening up the one where the resistor is. Tighten the one up with the resistor and that kind of holds everything into place. Let's stick the front one in, the first one, and the third one in with the ground wires like that with this little shorter wire. I'm going to bend that wire over like that and then we're going to take another one of these long three and a half inch ones. We're going to stick that in the, the center one. We're going to tighten that down. We're just going to put it together like that so we can come along with the solder and depending on how you wire this up um, you might want to make that wire the length you exactly need it to go to the board but in this case I'm putting it on as an example. So there we got it. We've got the diode in place and we got the resistor in place and the ground. So the chip, the block, the, the diode, the resistor bank, and that is the control board complete. Now the next step we're going to Clean the wires and solder this onto the back of uh, this coil set, like this. And you can see we're getting real close here, 
But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put these control boards together without having to shoot video so I can crank them out. So that's it. That's what we're doing. That's how to build the control board.